<laughs> it's Philly is funny with Bennett and Boss. Did this all start? I read this online, yeah. and you never know what's real online. Yeah. That you actually wrote your first joke for Jay Leno for fifty bucks? Is that an yeah, actual yeah. thing? Really? I did, yeah. <laughs> it's not like a made-up internet thing, but no, that's no, real. No. Okay. Um, by the way, are we recording? Yeah, yeah we're, we're just. We're yeah. just oh, I had no idea. Yeah, we're, we're just chatting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Because uh, I, I usually take my pants off for this. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for that. That's why I heard about <laughs> you. I, I yeah. I was like, where's the pants thing? What's going on here? It's Valentine's Day. Give me some action here. You like this? The most flamboyant shirt I could find. This is my Valentine shirt. Yeah, I like it. Justin said it was. It, no, I mean, it is, uh, but no. I it's love like it. somebody. But I wear a, it once a year, so yeah, what are you gonna it's do? Like somebody with a bleeding ulcer threw up on you. <laughs> Beautiful. I just met you and I'm insulted. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Bring my it. world. Uh, well, happy Valentine's Day to you, you, though. Yeah. yeah. So, so how does your wife feel about this? Uh, she's happy. Yeah. Because I get you out of the house. Yeah. Well, we've been together since high school. Yeah. And so. Um, you get oh, so you're, you're over it. Where it's, yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, she <laughs> she was, you know, I was a senior. Yeah, senior, and she was knocked out with a roofie. And um, <laughs> I don't even know what you could say anymore. People get so offended about it. I know. It's such a PC police world. So, yeah. like, and, um, yeah, so we've been together a long time. We have a kid. We have a dog. And so they have their routine. And she's like, when you come home, it's like a tornado hits. <laughs> and the whole apartment is about this stupid dog now because we adopted a dog with a weak sphincter. <laughs> and it just pees like at the dry. Yeah, you think it's oh funny? Try living God. in my house. Yeah. You literally, Jeez. it looks like a nursing home in my house. There's, <laughs> oh my there's weed pads everywhere. Oh. It's, <laughs> it smells oh. like desitin or something. You know, that, that's <laughs> yeah. like, and, uh, and then the dog will just lay there. And she's kind of slutty. I got a picture of her on my phone. She <laughs> What's just, her name? Yeah, her name is Daisy. All and, right. Uh, Where's Daisy? I want to see Daisy. Daisy um, is, um, is, is a mix. We got her at Bidoui, okay? And, uh, and so, but what she does is, first of all, she gives me dirty looks yeah. when I come into the room. Like, she makes me feel very self-conscious. I annoy her, apparently. And my wife <laughs> says, it's the sound of my voice. And I'm like, well, <laughs> this voice is feeding this thing. So yeah, she right? better get her act together. Um, and um, so the dog will just lay there. Hang on, I'm going to find it. like digging for that daisy picket. Yeah, oh, here it's it is. It's not your here background here. screen? Yeah, come on. Yeah. So, ah. Uh, but, but look how she spreads her legs. Oh, she's wait. adorable. No, but wait. Wait till the little far. Look at how she spreads her uh. leg like a little whore. She's like a little <laughs> whore. Now look. Now watch. Now watch this. Watch. So very, she's on her side on the couch. Oh, outside. yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to give it Come to you. Come here, daddy. Boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All you need is the music. <laughs> look at her. Who taught her that? That, that is oh, a fun dog. Jeez. Yeah. You can put that on TikTok, yeah. Bennett. Just, yeah, right. <laughs> and then she has this look in her eye, like, just leave the money on the dresser. You yeah, know? yeah, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you scoundrel. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and, and, and so she really does, like, uh, she gets treated like another child in the house. And so... And so, like, I'll walk in the room, and she'll look at me, and she'll go, like, ugh, this asshole again? And she walks into yeah. the other room. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. Oh, right. no, swear away. And, yeah. uh, and then I go into the room that I, like, so, like, if she goes into the bedroom, <clears throat> and I go back, I go in right after her because I forgot to get something, she'll look at me like, really? I just got comfortable in here. You know the yeah. rule. You're in that room. I'm in this room, right? <laughs> and uh, and so my, my wife is, like, cool. Because when you're together that long, you yeah. know. And I am disruptive. Like, I can be, like, it's just... Hurricane Paul rolling. Yeah, I come yeah. in, and I don't put anything away, and I don't, <laughs> like, because I don't have the patience, and... I'm the same way. I can't load a dishwasher. Yeah. Not because I'm a guy. It's just there's all these f rules. Like, God forbid you put a pan on the top rack. <laughs> I got mm -hmm. arrested for that. And and then you got to put the fork up. You can't put the fork down. And I'm like, why can't I put the fork down? The little box that it goes in has holes in the side, so the water... <laughs> These are the right. conversations yeah. that are happening in my house. Okay? Seriously. I and it agree squirts with in the you. side. I yeah. agree with you. You're 2020, you can't oh, make snap. a dishwasher that can go down. <laughs> so, like, I, it's, I'm better off just being in a hotel. Or, like, what's the rule? It's like you have to, like, wash all your dishes before you put them in the dishwasher. Yeah, it's like, exactly. what's the freaking point? What's yeah. the point of the dishwasher yeah, if exactly. I'm going to wash the dishes? Exactly. Or just give them the daisy and let her lick them because that's what go. she does. She just licks yeah, everything. Get that little horse and some dishes. She does. She, like, yeah. she goes, she's like, you know, she's a she sleep around. She really is a whore. I can't. <laughs> I want to take her she back. Said, I think there should be like a lemon law because they didn't tell us she had a weak sphincter. And I think they should have told us that. And yeah. I want to bring it should it be back. in the fine print, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, you know, you get bad breaks or something. You get a really, I think they should put her on the lift and swap, you know, swap out the sphincter and put a new sphincter in. <laughs> Is that unreasonable? Right, come on, people. Come on, Jeez. come on. Uh, but yeah, so, no, she's cool. But yeah, the thing about Leno, yes, I was working on Wall Street. I was doing M&A deals, merchant yeah. acquisitions. And 
no plan to, you know, I went to law school in DC and then I ended up in New York and I was doing corporate law and just doing my thing. And I figured you know, I'll do this for 20 years and make money and then retire or have a heart attack from all the cocaine. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. so like basically, and working like all nighters and stuff like that. And then I was right. I made some short films and then one of my films, I bought my, with my camera, uh, with my money, the, some of the first money I made, uh, in my job, I bought a camera and I started making films. And I don't know why I was making the films, but I was making the films. And one of them got into a big uh, HBO festival. And then they, I went to that. I lied at people at work and told them my mother was sick. And I was in Colorado at a festival <laughs> in a movie theater. Oh my, my, my movie comes up on a giant screen with my name. I'm like, what the? That's <laughs> insane. Yeah. And then they invited us to a luncheon for the young filmmakers, like short filmmakers. Yeah. So there's like meet here at nine o'clock out the morning and whatever. And then, oh no, it was like noon at the hotel. And so they get, you get in a van and then the van goes into the woods. And then I'm like, why are we in the woods? Am I going to be man raped or something? What's going on here? <laughs> and then we go to a clearing and then there's a horse drawn carriage sleigh. And they, we get in that and it brings us through another set of woods. And there's this massive mansion in the middle of like nowhere. And I walk in. And I look down, and there's a brook inside the house. I'm like, you know you have money when you have a brook running inside your house. <laughs> man-made brook. Yeah. Just like chilling. And I look, yeah. and I'm like, whose house is this? And I look, and there's this guy, and it's a picture with Barbara Streisand. Same guy, uh, another picture, him with Robert Redford. Same guy, him with Stallone. And I'm like, whoever this guy is. He's f***ing huge, <laughs> right? And it turned out to be a huge Hollywood producer. And I go into the dining room. And at the table is uh, Spike Lee, Woody Allen, the Hudlin brothers, and Albert Brooks. And That's I'm insane. having lunch with them. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, hey, any of you guys need M&A work? Because I can uh, do your <laughs> <laughs> And then I started writing jokes, and I went to a private function, and Jay Leno was the entertainment at the private function. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I had a lot of jokes at this point. Like I had like a thick like stack of jokes. And I just went up to him, and I was like... Um, I don't know if you need jokes. I'm never going to use these. I'm a lawyer. You can have them. And he was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, like, it just blew my mind that he actually taught, like, in person. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and the head's going back and forth. And it's like, and it's almost like, like, it's like, like you're like helium out of a balloon. Like, <laughs> and, and the, the chin. Yeah, the chin. Oh. oh, the chin is like a compartment for, like, pencils. It really is. <laughs> I was looking for the hinges and the latch. <laughs> You just want you talk to him. You just want to go breathe a little bit. Right. Just breathe. <laughs> and then a couple of days later, my phone rings, and no joke, this is what I hear. It's Jay Leno. His phone there. Now, there's an, in a million years, you don't think Jay Leno's going to call you, right? I thought he was going to just throw him away. Sure. So I thought it was my friend David pulling a prank, right. pretending to be Jay Leno. And I go, yeah, really funny, David. He goes, not really, it's Jay Leno. I go, this, you, it's, you're not Jay Leno. He goes, yeah, really. And then I actually said to Jay Leno, you do a lousy Jay Leno. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I think I do a pretty good me. And, uh, That's and wild. I basically, yeah, and I was like, oh, my God, I just blew this. And he goes, well, I read your stuff, and I need clean material for the Tonight Show monologue, so send in stuff, and if I use it, I'll pay you. That's awesome. And then I'll pay you 50 bucks a joke. And then he made fun of me. I go, he goes, what do you do for a living? I go, I'm a lawyer. He goes, I knew it. <laughs> I go, what? He goes, uh, you write like a lawyer. You're too wordy. He goes, it's like you're writing a contract for every joke. Just get to the punchline already. Because they were like really long, like wordy setups. Yeah. I was even giving him like stage direction, like make funny face here. And he's like, I've been doing this a while. I know when to make That's a funny really face. That's really funny. Oh, my God. And then uh, about a week later, he called me and he said, I'm going to do one of your jokes on The Tonight Show. So what was the joke? Um, it was... Um, Basically, it's basically about a dog with a weak sphincter. No. Um, <laughs> it, he basically, it was about this old house, like those contracting shows where, where they don't reflect reality at all because the guy, the contractor's like clean shaved, super polite, under budget, does extra work for free, <laughs> right? You know, giving you stuff. And, but in real life, the guy's drunk, showing plumber crack, hitting on your wife, <laughs> going through your sock drawer for money. And and he it got a big laugh. And it was like intoxicating because like out of that box that I watched my whole life, other people's jokes came right. out, and then my words came out. How unreal was that? Yeah, for you? it was crazy. And then I started to write jokes constantly to the point where I was taking two notebooks to deal meetings, and one was for the deal, and the other was for jokes. And I wasn't taking any deal notes. I was just writing joke, observational <laughs> stuff down. And then I had to recreate the minutes of the meeting. So I'd go back, and then I'd like if like the three of you guys were in the meeting with me, and like my fellow associates at the law firm, I go. Uh, uh, Hey, so what did this, what did he say? And they're like, you were in the meeting. Why, <laughs> right. why are you doing, <laughs> right, yeah. you're, you're the one that's Hello? supposed to keep track. 
And so then I. Um, so were you, were you then, fired? Or did you quit? Uh, no, I Wall quit Street. because okay. I was having a nervous breakdown at like 26 because I, I started then to, because Leno said, go try the jokes up before you send them to me. So I started to do open mic nights on my dinner break. But like we were literally working all nighters and, or like an early night was going home at 11, literally. Mm. So I, uh, you go get dinner and all the other associates would go to like a restaurant around the corner from the building and I would get in a town car and I'd have it take me downtown to dive bars and I would change up in the car and I'd take like my suit coat off and my tie and and my and try to look downtown, you know, <laughs> and uh, edgy, you know. Right, yeah. right. My yeah. idea of edgy was like unbuttoning my top button. Right? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Like, Ooh, this guy's <laughs> this... probably going to knife me, you know. <laughs> and, and then I would go and... And I'd wait and, you know, there bars, it was like uh, one bar, they dealt drugs out of there, a hooker worked out of there. The hooker would give you notes on your joke. She would literally <laughs> really? go like, how come you're not doing that joke about the cab drive? It just needs a little thing. And I'm like, first of all, get off your knees when you talk to me like that. <laughs> and secondly, you're not working right now. And yeah. so she, they, it became, it was like this dysfunctional group of family members, you know? So I would go do that and then I would get in the car and I dress back up. And then I'd go back to the firm and I'd work all night. And then I just was like running around trying to keep them both. And I kept them separate because I couldn't. The firm is like this really big, like firm, white shoe. They would not have approved. They would have told me, you can't. We don't want our lawyers doing that. And then I couldn't tell people. You know, these guys would have rolled me at the right. You know, they would have like stabbed no me. No wonder you had a nervous breakdown. Yeah. So I was just like, oh man, I don't know. How yeah, long did this go on for? Yeah. This this it double was like life. A year and a half. Oh wow, my god. god. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wasn't thinking of planning. I just was like, I'll get it out of my system. I'll get it out of my system. You know. Yeah. And then it was just like, oh man, we made this is still in my system. What am I <laughs> yeah. gonna do? Right. And then so that that became like, okay, what do I do? Do I leave? Do I stay? If I leave, I'm giving up all this security. I, I'm a middle class kid from Rhode Island. I don't come from money. Am I going to throw all this away and start over in a thing that I don't even know anything about? And then it was like, you know, I don't want to look back and say I should have. And so I was like, I think I'm going to go. And then uh, I told my, you know, my mother and father, my mother, it's like, she's 93 now. As Italian, high school educated, like, you know, my son's a lawyer, right? And I go, well, oh, I think I'm going to leave Wall Street to be a comedian. And she took a beat. She looked at me. And she goes, that better be your first joke. <laughs> and That's that, pretty good, Mom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. You can come on the road with me. Yeah. And uh, uh, But I can't have her come see me because she's like, she's first of all, she's shrinking by the minute. She's two and a half feet tall now. We, we take her around in a little shopping bag. And she has really bad hearing, so she wears a hearing aid all the time. And it whistles. like It's like a lot of... There's a lot of that, right? Yeah. And 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 she, you know, you if you take a walk with her, it's like dogs just immediately come flying. She tracks dogs with the whistling hearing aid. And so one time I'm performing and she comes to a club, and I told and I don't like her to come because I just having my mother's weird. But I'm like she wanted to come, it's our hometown Providence. So I said to my sister who's taking her, I go just make sure because my mother's like out of her mic. She she doesn't. You tell her to do A, she's gonna do B. She goes, so. I'm on stage. Now, just imagine you're on stage at your mother, right? Yeah. And I look in the back. I see in the back of the room this little, like, it, like a little dwarf, like, moving left to right, left to right, left to right, just a shadow. And it's my mother trying to get near a speaker and sticking her ear up toward the speaker oh so God. she could hear me. So in the middle of the show, I go... Ma, sit down. <laughs> and everybody looks at me like, did this guy, does he have Tourette's? Like, what happened, right? What's happening here? And she goes, I go, sit down, right? Just like this. And then, I, and then I start yelling at my sister from the stage. I go, Karen, you're supposed to keep her in your chair. Oh and then God. I had to tell people that my mother was like, ha is half deaf and in the back. And she, she just like, because she's like, you have to tie her down. She's out of her mind. Like, she just, she does, she started a business in a tenement house uh -huh. in the 1960s with two kids. When women of that generation generally didn't work and certainly not start business. Sure. So very like ahead of the curve, but then also a colossal like pain in the ass. Like <laughs> same time. Oh, she's just out of her mind. She doesn't use filing cabinets because they're too expensive. So she puts all of her bills and files in styrofoam coolers. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And then she, I'm not <laughs> you. And then she writes on the side of them because they're lightweight and they're easy to carry around. So like she, then she can say, okay, well I gotta pay, uh, I gotta pay freight bills tonight. So then she'll take it, go to the she'll cooler, put in her car, yeah. and then put the cooler in her car, and then she'll go home, and so she can run around with them. Oh, and I just said, looked at it one time, and I'm like, well, she gets audited. She looks like she's going on a picnic. It's really like, 
<laughs> where are the sandwiches? Right. Where's the Where's the beer? Oh it's my just, god! Uh, it's just she's too funny. She's yeah, a riot. We, yeah. She's so she's ninety three now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she will Good not go her. down. Yeah, we we try everything. She will not go down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sour milk. She's a oh, she's, resilient. Yeah, young lady. she is. Yeah. yeah. Tripper. She just bounces right back up. Um, and uh, you give her acid. She does. She comes right. Sturdy down. lady. Yeah. What can we say? Yeah. So she's still running her business at ninety three. Wow. No. Are you serious? Yeah, my father died like twenty years ago. Yeah. Good for her. Running. Yeah. Well, it keeps her busy, but you know we don't know. She gets herself in trouble, and then like we have to go and like, because they don't tell you when there's a problem because they don't want you to put them in a home. Mm. Like she's obsessed with like you're not putting me in one of those assisted living facility. Like you know, you know. Uh, so she's very independent. So like she'll do something and screw something up or whatever, and then she won't tell you. Like my brother called me. This was I don't know earlier at the end of last year, and he goes, "You know, Daddy's van was stolen." So we have a van for uh, the store to deliver furniture, but it was also my father put floors in for a living, so it was, he also used it for that. And I go, no. He goes, I go, when was it stolen? Now, if someone tells you your dad's van was stolen, you think yesterday? A year and a half ago. <laughs> what? Yeah, and my mother told the guy that works for us, don't tell my kids that the van was stolen. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she's, it's, she, that's what she does. And so, it, yeah. And have you guys like kind of teased that you're going to put her in a home for years? Has this been like a, a bargaining chip? Is, well, is she we like drug her and take her to homes, but she <laughs> always gets out. She's very wily. You know what I mean? She slathers herself in olive oil and sleeps out the bed. <laughs> no, because you can't even bring that up. But like, like, so I'm I'm yelling at her like, you know, you can't. You you got to tell us that the truck was stolen. That's a big. She goes, well, it had it needed brakes anyway. Like that's not the rationale. <laughs> like you know, so like. You, oh my God. She, she just, we just, we stopped trying to get her to do anything that she doesn't want to do because she's just going to do the opposite of what you tell her to do. Yeah. So like, you know, I can't, we tried to work in the store, but you can't work in the store. Like she's like out of her mind, you know? Right. And like, and she, she won't listen to anybody and she just does things her own way. And she like, there's like this thing. I don't know what it is. It's in her DNA. She'd be a good comic because like you do the, she does the opposite of what you tell her to do or right. ask her to do. And so, you know, I think we're just going to have to drug her, <laughs> handcuff her and put her in a place and she's going to like it. God damn it. Happy Valentine's Day, <laughs> mom. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Do you call her today on Valentine's Day? My wife? Yeah. Or, or your mom? No, I won't call my mother because nope. we're getting in an argument. She'll annoy me. So, yeah, right. Yeah. So she's yeah. history on Valentine's well, Day. call your mom. Well, no, yeah. first of all, it's, that, it's like talking to a tea kettle in a house dress with the hearing aid thing. It's like just constantly, <laughs> what? I don't Oh, my gosh. That. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll, probably call, yeah. I'll probably call her. I, I got her some discount flowers. Um, the only one <laughs> petal per stem. I, she's not worth the full bouquet. <laughs> no, I'm going to call her. And, uh, and, you know, but she, it's like, she just can't hear anything, so it's hard to have a conversation. Yeah. And so she and she won't wear her hearing aid, and she does it to annoy us, right? So like, one time we're going into my brother-in-law's house, and I'm like, "Ma, you got to wear your hearing aid because when you talk, you have to really like project, and, yeah. and that gets exhausting, right?" So she goes, "Oh," and she and we're standing in the driveway, and it's a stone driveway, and she's got the hearing aid in her hand, and um, like a gray hearing aid, whatever. And uh, she goes, "Oh, you, you, uh, you, you don't think I'm gonna wear this?" And then she just like she with you like she doesn't want to like what she knows it's annoying me right yeah she goes oh well, i'll put it in i'll put it in and then in the middle of the conversation she drops it in the driveway and then she reaches she didn't have her glasses on it she reaches down to pick up the uh, hearing aid and instead she picks up a stone that looked like a hearing oh, aid and no. stuck it in her ear <laughs> and, I'm like, and i'm like oh you know what you deserve that. And I just walked away. And uh, so like. I'm going to call your mom today. I, yeah. I feel like I know her at this yeah, point. Yeah, no, she's, she's, she's cool, but she's just like, she's, she's, she needs her own planet. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Yeah. Cool. That is cool so son. funny. Yeah. But, well, um, I could talk to uh, you about your mom and, and, and your whore dog, Daisy, all day, but I know that you have to run and do the uh, the whole media yeah, circuit. Man, this but... is a lot of fun. I, you, I had no idea we were even on. This is awesome. This is cool, right? Yeah, yeah. this is great. You do this every every week? Every I'm week. here. Yeah. So awesome. whenever you're in town in Philadelphia, pop on in. You know where I yeah, am Yeah, I've been doing a one-man show um, off-Broadway in New York, and we're talking about taking it on the road, and I, I really like Philly, and so you know I might... Uh, you know, get your number, or whatever. That'd be great. Be up, yeah. We would love that back, for sure to promote something. But yeah, it's been really fun. I I just bring people on stage and they tell stories from their lives. It's a complete and it's totally improv, improv, right? Yeah, totally. That's like my favorite part of yeah of comedy, and just improv stories, off the cuff. Yeah, and... and that and I do that in my act too. So like I'll spend some time talking to people, but it's not like crowd work to get into a bit, right? Like, 
hey, you have a hat, and then I magically have a bit about a hat. Yeah, it's just more like you know conversation. Yeah, and wherever it goes, and and then you know the funny finds itself, and people are really funny in their own right, and so like you, you just you know like there was a there was a woman real quick, and um, I said, what's your name? She goes, Nidia. I go, Lydia. She goes, no, Nidia. I go, oh, that's a unique name. How'd you get that name? And the premise of the show is everybody has a story. And if we talk, we connect. And if we connect, maybe we see like we have more in common than we think. And people aren't at each other's throats. It's not right. a political show. It's just, sure. and not a heavy message, but like, you know, there, no comedy, no stand up, any of that. And uh, Nidia, she goes, yeah, well, my father named me after his lover. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, he, you were born out of wedlock. No big deal. She goes, oh, no, he was married to my mother, got her pregnant with me, was having an affair with a woman and named me after the woman he was having an affair with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For those of you listening, all three people here have their jaw on the floor. That's what everybody in the audience. <laughs> and like, and 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 I go, how was that? She goes, it was weird, <laughs> as you would expect. Yeah, exactly. So wow. there's like this, some some of the stories have been incredible, and there's oh actually stuff on my uh, YouTube channel and my website. So uh, if you listen and subscribe to my channel, it's uh, Paul Mercurio, and I have a podcast uh, with lots of different people like Paul McCartney, and Brian Cranston, Stephen Colbert, Neil deGrasse Tyson. So like. There's something for everybody, but um, the YouTube channels uh, got a lot of stuff on it. But yeah, it's been really fun. So I'd like to come try to kick it down here. You know? yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Billy would love you. You'll have a lot of stories in Philadelphia. Some, yeah. So yeah, yeah, some crazy people. Yeah, so. I know. And, <laughs> and it's it might really work out amazing. well for you. There's stories yeah. when you hear them, you go, like if we were in a writer's room at the Late Show and we were trying to come up with a skit, right? we'd come up with the premise and then go, no, nobody would ever name their kid after. No, right. no one would believe this. Scratch yeah. this. Let's start again. Yeah, it's like and literally unreal. Eighty-five percent of the stories are like that. Wow. Yeah, it's it really crazy. Oh, it so. makes you feel better about your own life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just dealing with a dwarf Italian woman who right. can't yeah. hear. I have made. I'm easy. I got it easy, baby. Still, you end up. But yeah. So, um, but yeah, yeah maybe, please come maybe, back. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you. Really so, uh, two shows tonight at Punchline, right? Two shows tonight, Friday and two Saturday, seven thirty and nine forty-five. Right, both Friday and Saturday, and Beautiful. then Sunday, seven thirty. Bring oh, your, awesome. bring yeah. your significant other, bring your lover, yeah. bring the your punchline dog, bring, bring your ho yeah, dog, whore <laughs> yeah. dogs are welcome. Bring them all, they're yeah. all welcome. Bring them all, Daisy yeah. animals, man. cats, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this Paul. is really fun, man, thank you. Yeah, Paul, thank you so much, we yeah. appreciate it. Absolutely. Philly is Funny with Bennett and Boss, exclusively on Radio.com.